Hello and welcome. Many thanks for joining us on this edition of the program, your source for latest happenings in the financial sector of the nation's economy. I am Jennifer Obidiebube. On the lineup this week, we bring you the continuation of the discussion on brand management in the insurance industry on the town hall. When somebody believes I book until I pay, once I pay my tithe, I have okay. to insure. Insurance. Okay, sure. So there is no amount of you go to CNN, you go to um, news, what's going New York Times, and say that bind is there. Also, we bring you highlights of the Standards Organization of Nigeria Maritime Stakeholders Awareness Forum that took place recently at the Golden Tulip Hotel here in Lagos. This is a forum. If anybody has information to contact me, please do. It's an open forum. That 99 percent of the substandard products we complain about are imported. If you have statistics that is different, please feel free to tell me when I finish. And not forgetting our insurance fact file. All these and more are what we have coming up shortly after the break. Please stay with us. The government has given them leverage to put those signs everywhere, they are not paying for it. I don't know whether they are paying for it because it's just like uh, corporate social responsibility, responsibility. you know. Yes, and the signs are everywhere. I don't just want to mention their name, but when you go through Lagos, you see those signs. <laughs> but look at the name that is there. They only have their logo. And I ask again, how many people can identify this company with their logo? You just write your name and the logo and nothing like insurance. They confuse the public. And I, when I look, I, I came to the conclusion that these people don't know what brand management is all about. You can't just see maybe uh, Zenit Bank want to run a campaign. They just say Zenit and stop at that level. We have Zenit computers. We have <laughs> Zenit uh, uh, engineering. You know, you must, they must attach that bank to it. Zenit Bank, GT Bank, Intercontinental Bank. But an insurance underwriter want to, to, to embark on a laudable project as that. We just say, they just put their, their name without telling the public who they are. You know, that actually made me believe that they don't actually understand what brand management is all about. I could remember, just as uh, Mr. Banky said, when I was growing up, all insurance companies, it's just like today now, when you want to buy, uh, maybe you want to buy uh, those small canned juice for your, your children and what, they always say, buy me bobo. To them, every small juice is bobo. bobo. When we are growing up, every underwriter then is IGI. Is IGI. Once anybody says I'm an insurer, you just say you only know them with idea. But today, where is that brand? I don't just know what happened. You know, I, I think the industry operators still have a lot of work to, to do. We are complaining that insurance penetration is low. We are complaining that people are not buying insurance. But what are we actually doing to endear ourselves to the public? When it comes to the area of corporate social responsibilities, what are we doing? And when we do this corporate social... Mr. Banky is here. Do you know that there are many insurance companies that embark on corporate social responsibility? After that, they just take the photograph, they take the stories and bury it in the organization without letting the public okay, know. Okay, in spite of what, we, um, what Banky has said, often time, a lot of people, the perception out there is that insurance companies, they don't settle claims. Now you find insurance companies, they will come and say, oh, we paid um, a 6 billion claim last year. When you were paying those claims, who was no. there? Who did you tell? Imagine. You know, these are some of, I don't know, uh, maybe Banky can come in. Why is that so commonplace in the insurance industry? You find an industry that people don't trust you. And when you now do things, the reason why you are in business is to settle claims. When you now settle these genuine claims, the public, you don't make noise about it. You don't shout about it. And people keep saying, you don't pay. Uh, you see, the thing is this. The, at some point in time, I think... Maybe the media too would um, should be blamed for for some of these things. You see, you, it would be as if you're playing to the gallery. First and foremost, the the business of insurance is about underwriting 
and then at the end of the day paying claims so that is obvious so if i've done what i need to do why shout it to the world if um if a first bank or some other bank at some point in time gave out transferred was it just not now that we're hearing that some 2.4 billion went from one place another? who was advertising that no, they couldn't advertise. They couldn't that's the thing that they, I mean, but they, this, that's our business too. It was a really, see, but you see, the thing is this. Yes, we have been so silent in trying to take advantage of those things that would have put the industry at a vantage position. I agree. It's not as if um, well, some, of us, some of us can still absolve ourselves from such thing, but as it is now, we need to talk collectively. What I'm doing, yes, I could be talking as Shego Bank, but I'm still representing the industry. I, I, I work, that is where I earn my bread, my naira and cobble from. I've noticed over time too, and that goes to the fact that we still talked about people believing in that concept that, oh, look, this thing must hit must hit the news. This thing must hit the news. We let people know. Let people know. People advertise. Insurance companies do advertise. I, at least I listen to radio when I'm coming to the office when I go. And I hear some. But you see, the longevity of some of this campaign is what you would say, oh, fine, maybe if they've had more funds, maybe they would have invested in the campaign. Um, the one you talked about you talk about clean payment, Abi, and uh, people not talking about it. Let me, let me, as an aside, maybe the, the joke there in what you just said about the, the road sign. The road sign. Maybe the people assume that yeah, they are right. Everybody knows them. Do you understand? Maybe they just assume that, no, 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 no. I want to see that they know us no. now. But you see, it could be an assumption. Um, I just want to believe that whoever is in charge of that brand is watching this program at this point in time Sorry. and will do the needful in correcting that um, anomaly. But the truth be told, we print a lot of marketing paraphernalia, we go for exhibitions, we do that. You find that because of the bind that has been created in the mind of the insuring public, like you said, there is a big stick that is, you know, wagging on the head of that industry. Insurance. When the word insurance is mentioned in Nigeria, you like, oh, you know. They have come again. <laughs> Even I, I have friends who still do not believe I work in an insurance firm because of maybe the, my personality and all that. Some friends call me doctor. Some friends call me, you know, um, lawyer. And all of that. I've had. I mean. It, times without number. They don't believe that I'm in an insurance. But I'm with a firm that is, you know, evolving, is dynamic, understands what the company is all about, understands what the brand is all about. Yes, we still haven't done much, but I mean, like I said, it's a journey. So when we begin to put that conscious effort into, okay, we want uh, the public to know this straight in the papers. But what I said the media has their own fault is timeliness. Timeliness. Because you see, some of us use the medium of press releases to want to say, okay, this is what we've done. And over time, maybe because of the fact that you're dealing with so many operators, you keep killing the story. So by the time it's coming out, obviously a lot of events will have even gone past what you're saying. It doesn't become, it's no news to anybody again. So the media too would need to do a lot I remember there was a time we had a media retreat, which I was part of in Abel Okuta, that we wanted to see how can we synergize our efforts to say, okay, how do we help ourselves? It's an industry, but I, I don't want to see, and I don't want to believe that the industry should be the weapon industry. This is one industry abroad that would finance any bank, any time, any day. Talk about insurance, they have some of the biggest investments in these developed climbs. But why here? One, the people who were meant to attract already have a bind in their mind that, look, this business is all about, like they say, in quote, Kalo Kalo business. A lot of people do not understand the concept of insurance. Now, the advent of churches here and there, 
has even taken a lot of the portion of <laughs> a lot of the portion of what should go as premium or you know to an insurance company when somebody believes that you until i pay once i pay my tithe i have okay. to insure insurance Protection. so there is no amount of you go to cnn you go to um news what's called new york times and say that's bind a stair but you see the understanding that the pastor who is collecting the tithe to insure the church you'll be so shocked so it's just about education it's about people to frame their minds i hear people who say ah my uncle told me did you at any point in time pick up a policy, policy. what your, was your own personal experience okay. that's the cobweb i'm talking about so we carry that cobweb around so whatever effort that the insurance companies are even putting to say okay we want to develop the industry is as if it's just dropping it's like your tiny drop going into the ocean oftentimes when you talk about when you talk to some insurance uh, executive top executive they tell you that oh uh, you talk about advertising you talk about advertising on television you talk about this thing. you don't know it's money it's expensive so and sometimes i tell them that you don't know coca-cola as it is today as yeah. a brand they have no business advertising again yeah. because over 150 years over, okay. yes they don't have business advertising but you still find them refreshing the brand in the minds of those that are coming in contact with the brand so it's it as a brand analyst do you see what do you see in terms of operators of this industry that they do know they have an image problem but they are not ready to see investment in brand development as uh, to see it as an investment i think very importantly in my note here i put it there it is important for us to know that the insurance practitioners or limited insurance players in nigeria they are always concerned about making money not about investing the money they don't want to spend the money but they want to keep the money like mr bankole was saying all yeah, an insurance MD have a broker, have uh, the <laughs> agent, <laughs> have everybody <laughs> in a briefcase. <laughs> but you are not thinking about reaching out to the public. You know, we are so the way the insurance operators in Nigeria operate, they look for the elite. They want to write in their full ACG to where the money is. Ready. The oil company they <laughs> are no longer they, are, they don't have the money again. But they prefer to write, to take their full ACG, new branded Italian suit, to go to them, to go and do business, live in other places where the one one era to cover that you will make from them will bring enough money to the company. But they're not looking, looking at that. The social media platform is another strategy, but they are not looking at. Major problem is that these operators they are not researching. They are not looking at what is evolving, what is what is going on in the world presently actually will you see nigerians there's a, strat a statistics that was released last year over a million nigerians buy phones android phone on a daily basis in nigeria a million phone android phones on a daily basis in nigeria what do they use it for all of them are connected to the internet in one way or the other there are banks in nigeria who need not to even do advert, who need not to place advert on the social media, but you find them there. there. Why are they, what are they doing there? The money they are making, why are they not taking it, keeping it in the bank? Why are they spending the money on advert? To still project the bank, the brand that is there already. But that you will not find in insurance. We don't have such a thing. Last year, I was speaking with uh, an insurance... Um, uh, brand manager, one of the corporate, uh, corporate affairs manager, he said their foreign company made 70% of their turnover on social media. Through just social media advert, they got referred to the company to make their turnover. Now, okay, what are you now doing? Can I not learn from Your what, the, what the foreign company, foreign company did? Like what Mr. Bancoli said. The managers who sit there even when the brand managers come to meet the MDs, this is a strategy that was doing this way. They say, There's no money. This one. There's no money. <laughs> There's no budget. There's nothing we can do to it. There is a friend who was sharing with me that, ah, I want to defend my budget. But my MD is having a problem with the budget I'm bringing. He said, This is how we used to do it. And they said they want to continue in that way. You know, 
let me quickly point out we company can spend little and still project PR okay, strategy. I was, just, I was just trying to call it. Is it yeah. brand development? Is yeah. it just about the big money. spending? Yeah. No, let me, let me let me let yeah. me put it this yeah. way. PR, when it comes to PR, you don't have to spend to for on PR. It is on advertising that you spend. Why don't we engage the PR strategy? Claim settlement is a big PR strategy that companies are not looking at. But I talked to for that example, and bank for example, that let me put it this way. Bank, bank, Mr. Bankole's company last year paid billions of naira to a company, a particular company. Millions. Millions. Okay, millions. Mm -hmm. You know, when I put it on the table, somebody said, somebody, when I put it on the, on, online, we talked about it. Uh, somebody put a comment that, is this for, for real? real? Yeah. Would it? You know, that takes me back yeah. to why I asked the question that you people settle claims mm. and you do it in the hiding. Mm -hmm. Then you not come and tell us that, oh, we settled this claim last year. And mm. the public, they are asking us that, you media people, mm -hmm. did they pay the claim in the, in the air? How come we did not see it? We did not know. And you are saying that. And that's, yeah. I think that's a mindset that mm. some of these operators have that, oh, we are in, in, in insurance business, business to pay claims. So when we are paying claims, why do we need to advertise it? Yeah, you see, the, 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 the truth of it, I think I would, there are two issues that um, Cardi has um, really, really happened on that I really would like to talk about. Um, having to go to town to talk about the claims company A or company B has paid over time is good. But you see, at what point are you saying it? When we paid the claim that we paid, it was, it was a fire claim yes. for one of our clients in the East, and quickly we went to town. Some of my friends who read the news was like, it's a lie bank. He, you paid that. I said you had paid, and I could I could go back to my archive in the office and I show you clips of such press releases that has talked about that. But you see, it gets to some point in time when it's the same story that you're hearing. You know, it becomes some dead music in your ear because okay, claim claim. Okay, what other thing are you doing? He did talk about um, PR. I'm not here to sell my company but i can say to you because of the fact that whoever is sitting on the desk who calls himself the head of copy communications or corporate affairs and all of that and what has happened over time is some companies will just pick somebody from admin you even seen a situation <laughs> where, <laughs> where, 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 where you see some you see some issues you see some places where the head of corporate uh, the corporate affairs is admin is finance you have about four portfolios and you look at the person you look at the person who is meant to be exuding you know that aura of creativity and like it's not there this person does not have this thing so why burden him with all of this thing Welcome back. Moving on, the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, recently put together a one-day Maritime Stakeholders Awareness Forum at the Golden Tulip Amuwa Duffy. The theme was Seamless Trade, Fostering Trade Without Compromising Standards. Welcoming stakeholders to the forum, Dr. Paul Anya, DGSON, stated that 99% of the substandard products that are complained of in Nigeria are imported. The Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, is actively involved in import inspection of goods and quality assessments at the ports through her activities on the single window platform. The importance of this exercise is enormous considering the economic 
and health safety implications of influx of substandard goods into the country. In a bid to maintain relationship, the Standards Organization of Nigeria recently put together a one-day maritime stakeholders awareness forum at the Golden Tulip Hotel, Amuwa Odofin, Lagos. The theme was Seamless Imports, Fostering Trade Without Compromising Standards. In his opening remarks, Dr. Paul Angia, Acting DG, Standards Organization of Nigeria, stated that the problem of substandard products in Nigeria is not new, but the current level is unprecedented. The, the problem may not be very new, but the level at which it is now is new. Because it was exactly because of this problem that we established SONCAP in 2005. It was because the level, the availability, the circulation of substandard products in Nigeria had gotten to an unacceptable level by 2005. And we had looked at the dynamics of importation, substandard products, seizure, destruction, and the consequent loss of money used for the imports. We looked at the chain. And we thought that we could save ourselves a lot of pain. And we introduced the Sonka program in 2005. So this problem is not completely new. But the level at which it is now, it has never been there before. In his goodwill message, the National Publicity Secretary, Nagaf, Mr. Stanley Ezenga, stated that the association is in support of what SON is trying to do because if substandard products are not destroyed, they will kill the economy. So we are here to say that we are totally in support of what the organization is trying to do for, as the MC said, if we don't kill substandard goods, substandard goods will kill us. So I want to say that we are really in support and I um, appreciate everybody who is here for having time to come and honor this invitation. Other speakers were Chief Chukuka Eti Agobama, President General Nafak, Comrade Ben Yu Nde, and a host of others. In his submission, Mr. John Ofobike, Zonal Coordinator, Western Zone, Analka, told importers to stop bringing substandard goods for them to clear. It is not optional. We must support you. We must support you, not even because of you. Because you are fighting what is right. You are just to regulate. It is our duty as citizens to fight for some. Because the effect of some, of some standard, is something we cannot uh, uh, discuss. The Important Association, Please go and put your house in order. Stop bringing substandard goods to us. We don't want to kill you anymore. Please. The high point of the awareness forum was the open house, which was the question and answer session. Nigeria has a very porous border. With the population of 1,500 uh, staff of a uh, son, how are you going to police the border? And what do you want the federal government to do in that direction? Many believe that the war against fake and substandard goods is for all citizens because government agencies alone cannot do it. All right, that's our time on the program this week. I do hope you liked every bit of it. We would like to hear from you, so please contact us on 0177639810800335 
or 090-9685-2685 or send us an email on almond 4 x at yahoo.com or almondproduction at gmail.com. Visit our website almondreports.com and like us on our Facebook page Almond Finance and Wealth Reports. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel Almond Reports TV to view past episodes of this program. Don't forget to join us every Wednesday by 9.45 a.m. live on Ninja FM 102.7 for our Pigeon English program Waiting Insurance They Do Self. You can also reach us on WhatsApp on 080-335-7879 and tweet at us at Madame Insurance. This program also airs on BCOS Television every Thursday at 6 p.m. for those in Ibado and environs. Until next time, I am Jennifer Obidi Thank you for watching and goodbye.